Let's see here. I started fishing bladed jig in 2007. Got a top 10 at Clear Lake in the FLW series event late in the fall. Uh, and I had two different patterns. I was catching them on a jig and then I was catching them on the vibrating jig in the grass. And so, uh, you know, I got some good, really good confidence in that vibrating jig. And in 08, our first, first tournament was at Lake Toho. And the first day I ended up leading the tournament. Second day I lost the lead. Third day I caught another gigantic bag. And then the last day I think I won by like 15 pounds or something like that. So that got a lot of confidence in it for me. And then, and then literally, oh, we come off. Literally uh, got in my truck and drove all the way to the California Delta, fished that tournament. Won that tournament with like a four day total of like, I think 105 or 106 pounds. So literally in like a two and a half week span, I won $250,000 on um, the chatterbait. You know, predominantly just a green pumpkin one, three eighths. I mean, here, here's the things that, why, I mean, I, I get that question all the time. Why is a chatterbait so good? Okay, so first of all, what's probably one of the most productive reaction baits that has ever been developed and it's been around forever and that's a rattle trap so it has that same vibration real tight vibration that a rattle trap has almost identical to the chatterbait so obviously something with that tight vibration bass like a lot um, the other thing that it has is that it has the deflection of a square bill the square bill is probably one of the it, it, it's the best shallow run and crankbait out there just because when it deflects off wood, rocks, anything like that, or grass, that's what triggers a strike. And then the third thing is you can throw this in places where you can't throw a lot of any other reaction baits, whether it's grass or I can skip it up under a dock 30 feet so I can fish a reaction bait where I can't fish any other reaction baits. So, I mean, those three things just in general are, are my three keys why the jackhammer or the chatterbait is so productive. Like I said, so I, in 08, when I won those tournaments, I thought, okay, you know, this is strictly a grass, a grass style, aquatic vegetation style bait. And, and we learned <laughs> anywhere that you catch them on a spinnerbait, whether I'm at Lake Mead and I can see 25 feet deep, fishing rocks, a little brush, they'll bite on it. Um, or skipping under docks. Um, I mean, it, it's just, it's such a versatile bait. Like right now, we're just, you know, I'm just winding out here in 14, 15 feet over a little, you know, rocks and brush and they bite it. So it's just come to be a super versatile bait. Um, you know, you can catch smallmouth, you can catch largemouth, spotted bass, everything. And that's what I tell people that, that, that are interested, intrigued about the chatterbait that I've never thrown at. Um, you know, throw it just like you would, start out throwing it just like you would a, a spinnerbait. Uh, and if you do that, you're going to catch fish on it. And for me, you know, it's, there's a lot of different colors out there. And sometimes one color works better than, than others. But um, I tell people, you know, starting out, you know, get a green pumpkin one and get some kind of shad pattern. And just alternate between those two and, and you're going to be successful with the chatterbait. Uh, and, and for me, it's, it's always been 20 pound fluorocarbon. I like Sunline, the FC Sniper, something nice and limp, real castable. And I, I found out uh, as soon as I started throwing it, I always threw it on a glass rod, a heavy action glass rod. And that's the biggest mistake that people make with a chatterbait is they look at it, you know, they, they look at it and they're like, oh, this is a jig. So let's put it, you know, well, yeah, it looks like a jig. Let's put it on our, you know, medium heavy or heavy action graphite rod and cast it around. Well, you got to think of that thing more like a crankbait. I, I just kind of ran into it right off the bat, a heavy action glass rod. The castability is way better. You can be way more accurate with it. So the reason I get this question, well, why on your spinnerbait do you throw a graphite rod and then on a chatterbait you throw uh, a, a glass rod, something that's, I mean, this, this rod's, this evergreen rod that I developed, it's a 7.3 heavy. I mean, it, it has a big parabolic action, but about the fifth or sixth rod down, or guide down, it has a lot of power. So think of this, with a spinnerbait, 
a graphite rod used in something a lot more faster action. And then with the chatterbait, you know, we're using a, you know, still heavy action, but very parabolic. So with a spinnerbait, you cast it out there and you set the hook, that spinnerbait has a ton of flex to it. So you need a rod that's more rigid and has a faster action. With a chatterbait, this is a direct line tie, direct connect. There's no, there's no give in this. So you need something to take up that give a little bit more. And that's why I tell people to think of it more like a, uh, you know, like a crankbait. So that's the biggest, the number one reason why people lose fish on the chatterbait is they're using too stiff a rod. They need something that's more parabolic. Um, and then I always team it up with a 6.3 to one gear ratio reel. And with the 6.3, I can slow it down, I can speed it up, you know, it's just a good mid-range. If you were fishing ultra shallow, I guess you could go to like a 7.1 to a 7.3, something like that. But most of the time I'm always throwing on a 6.3 to one. Now trailers, I developed the Yamamoto Zako. And you know, it, what's funny is you get a lot of people, they're like, well, they try it like on a swim jig. They say, well, it doesn't have any action. I want that profile that, that Zocco has. It has that big belly. It just has that bigger fish profile. They're, they're looking for that bigger fish with that V tail. And then with the segmented tail, it just allows it to have a lot of movement. And that tail, it smushes up like a accordion. So when the fish gets it, uh, this is the new boot tail, or the paddle tail, but when the fish gets it, 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 it smushes up like accordion and allows, the, allows them to get the bait a little bit better. So helped design the, the original Zocco, and we didn't want to have a lot of movement. We wanted it to be real subtle. You don't see a bluegill like kicking his tail like this. I want it to have, be real, real subtle because the, cause the actual jackhammer in the chatterbait has so much movement, you don't want to overpower it necessarily, not all the time, with a, with, a, with a tail that has a big paddle on it. You know, about, I guess it's maybe three or four years ago, I, I went to Evergreen and wanted to, to, to design the best chatterbait ever, ever made. And just with all my experience of casting it for miles and miles and miles and miles and kind of knowing what needed to be tweaked uh, and the right hook and the right style of blade that I've learned and the right snap and you know having a hand tied skirt gamagatsu hook stainless steel blade we we're the first ones to really come out with a, a true painted green pumpkin blade um, that kind of matches the skirt uh, we started out with a three eighths and half and then went to three quarter and now we even have an ounce and a quarter so you can fish it from it, that's what makes it so versatile. You can fish it from a half a foot deep out to 30 feet deep, and, and we have the sizes to do it. So just an awesome bait. I mean, I've, I've won over a million dollars just on chatterbait, and it's been really good to me. And I love to hear all the stories that everybody comes up to me and tells me that they've caught their biggest fish ever on a chatterbait, and they, you know, after they've seen me fish it and just see their reaction on how many fish they catch on it. So, I mean, that that's pretty much the, the gist of the story, those are my tips and techniques. And I mean, I hope, hope that helps people, um, you know, catch more fish. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a bait that catches big ones in numbers. So it's a win-win. There was a bunch of different bladed jigs out on the market. And a lot of them you'd cast out there and you'd have to jerk them to get them to vibrate. And then some would vibrate harder than others. Like you'd get one and you're like, oh, this is like the sacred one because it vibrates harder. The jackhammer, they're all consistent. You cast it out there, and as soon as you start turning the handle, it's vibrating. And every single one that you get out of the package, it vibrates all the same instead of having that inconsistency. A lot of people don't really understand there's a little slot in the head of all the jackhammers. So what happens, let's say you have this one bladed jig, you've had it forever, uh, and you caught, you know, let's say 50 fish on it, you really start pulling on this thing. Uh, and what happens is that that uh, eye, it just opens just a little bit and all of a sudden you cast it out there and boom, you bring in just a blade. So that slot right there is so that when, when they bend this hoop, they over bend it into that channel. So even if it pulls up a little bit, there's no way that that blade will ever come out. So it's kind of a safety precaution. 
and then you know like I said uh, there's just a lot of lot of different things with geometry wise um, on why the jackhammer is is what it is and it's you know it's it's proven that most all the top professionals on on any of the tours are throwing the jackhammer just because it it has the best components and it uh, and it works the best.